ANC MP Mduduzi Manana is once again in hot water. His domestic cleaner accusing him of pushing her down the stairs of his uh, four ways home. She's opened a case of common assault against him, but uh, later withdrew the charge. But this afternoon, we understand that that case is still being pursued by the NPA. Explosive audio emerging yesterday, allegedly recording Manana offering hush money to the victim. Now, six months ago, he was found guilty of assaulting two women at a Johannesburg nightclub. He was sentenced to a year in jail or a fine of 100,000 rand. Well, to talk more about this, we're joined in studio by the ANC Youth League spokesperson, Mlondim Kize Lebo Ramafoko from the Seoul City Institute, as well as a commissioner for the uh, gender equality. This is Mbuise Lobota. Let me thank you all for your time tonight. I'm going to begin with the guests that are here with me in Johannesburg in Tatabuata will come to you in the in a moment. Perhaps let's just begin with this a statement that has been issued by the ANC Youth League. I mean, you have been um, very clear in terms of what you think should happen to Duduzi Manana. I compare your statement with that of the ANC Women's League. Uh, they were taking a rather measured approach, perhaps, to what you have. Um, why did you feel that it was necessary to speak as strongly as you have against him, and calling him for him to resign? Well, uh, you, you know that uh, the story would have started by an allegation that there were charges. Subsequently to that, the withdrawal. Subsequently to that, someone complains about extortion of 100,000. Subsequently to that, we then learned that actually the extortion is not an extortion. Someone offered someone 100,000. And we feel that uh, you, you can't be a victimizer and then portray the victim as the victimizer. First of all, that's wrong. Two, is that we're speaking about uh, someone who had uh, recently been exposed to, to this kind of uh, thing that uh, he would have been told that don't do this and uh, the fine therefore that he had to pay. And we feel that this is not showing an indication of someone who has learned from his wrongdoings as, as a result and intention to stay away from such behavior. It's, uh, when you say six months, six months is too much, it's less than four months. The day was given the decision in court and the day of the incident is less than four months. And that to us is, is worrying and concerning. And for us, we, we need to do something as the ANC. And we feel that the ANC ought to act. And we're not saying that the ANC must act because it's him. The ANC before has acted. In 2006, there was an MP of the ANC who was uh, accused of having had uh, something with a 21-year-old. He was uh, found guilty by the court. The ANC took a decision that is going to institute an internal disciplinary process of the ANC. Then the verdict was given by the ANC that he must spend three years in community service working with women. We don't understand why the ANC leadership is quiet about that matter because we've got precedent that the ANC has done this outside of law enforcement processes. And that's why we're saying that, uh, well, the ANC is going to election just the country is going to election. Can you imagine rallies that must be addressed by Mkutuz Manana? in the presence of women. What becomes the attitude of those women towards the ANC when they send to Duzman and to address those rallies? That's what the youth league is concerned about. If the ANC is saying this is going to be a serious election, it needs to take serious decisions in demonstrating that it is committed to pursue and maintain the values of the African National Congress. It, it's interesting that the ANC youth league should hold this position. Uh, I'm going to bring you in here, Lebo, and we take into account the response of the Women's League that has said they note the allegations and they want want uh, the law to take its course. We'll take, we go back to um, a Q&A session by the Deputy President, um, David Mabuza, uh, earlier on um, this year, where he said Mduduz Manana must be given an opportunity to be rehabilitated. Yesterday, the President being asked about it, and he said that he wasn't made aware of the latest allegations and that he would need to investigate it. Parliament today saying that they're concerned about the allegations, but the matter will be referred to the Ethics Committee for further recommendation. So certainly the official channels of um, government and inadvertently the ANC not being as strong and perhaps even as clear as the Youth League is on this one. It's very interesting um, what uh, Ubud Mlondi is saying, that if the ANC is serious about elections next year, they will take this matter seriously. So the question that comes to my mind is, if next year was not an election year, what would have been the response? The truth of the matter is that we have not seen leadership on the issue of violence against women in this country. And the responses that you are talking about, even from parliament, clearly states that there is no political will. Because we still want to portray 
abuse against women is done by a group of men who are monsters. And we don't want to acknowledge that in fact the patriarchal system that we are operating in in South Africa is creating a situation where you and I as women in this country are afraid of all men, not some men, not men who had been found guilty, but all men because of the rampant violence against women. So I'm not surprised to be seeing various groupings and organs of the ANC and parliament saying so many different and cautionary uh, uh, things uh, about, about uh, 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 violence against women and about uh, uh, Mduduzi Manana. You will recall just the pains at which the public had to go to, to even expose the matter that happened at uh, 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 the restaurant uh, uh, where he was at, and how different things were said by different parts of the, of the ANC, including the ANC Women's League, who were saying, well, there's worse than him, as if saying we must now give him a, a trophy because he is better than others. So I think all of these things speak to just how we do not have the commitment to deal with gender-based violence. And I guess the reason why we do not have the commitment to deal with gender-based violence in this country is the fact that so many people find the, the finger pointing at themselves. Because essentially to deal with violence against women in South Africa, you need to deal with social norms that have made it go about unchallenged. And perhaps these social norms have given people power particularly men, in such a way that we are also not able to deal decisively. We do know, for an example, that the co uh, women underreport violence against women because the very justice system that we are saying, well, let's let the court deal with this, is so hostile to women. Let us not forget Fezeka and what happened to Fezeka when she had accused a powerful man of rape. Let us not forget who got the support and how the activists in one in nine were persecuted just for supporting Fezeka. And, you know, I, I want to draw on, on, that, on that example that, that you've just raised here, the, the protection that, that seems to, um, that those who are being accused of wrongdoing seem to enjoy. And Dr. Poeta, let me bring, in, bring you into this conversation. Do, do you think in this particular instance that Mduduzi Manana is being deliberately protected by his comrades in the ANC? Well, Kathy, I think it's important for us to go back. I think we, we, when we talk about this incident and what happened uh, at Cabana, we in fact are late. Kathy, remember that Manana is now serving in the highest decision-making body of the ANC is in the NEC. Now, we must start there. We, we must start there that there is this acceptance. There is this acceptance that, look, uh, we can move forward. And, and what does that say to women? It says that, look, we will deal decisively with corruption, but when there is GBV, gender-based violence, we can understand it's few women, so it's not a crisis. The point I'm making, Kathy, is that even before we talk about his conviction, we must go back and ask the question, why is it that Manana is serving in the highest decision-making body of the African National Congress. What are the members saying who sit beside him about the women out there who constitute, by the way, the majority of the citizens, and they are the majority of the voters of this government, you know? So I'm just saying that, Kathy, we, there, is an, there is already a, a, an environment that all of us have actually looked the other way. All of us think that it's okay, uh, that impunity becomes, um, I mean, it becomes the, what defines who we are as South Africans. So I'm just saying that, uh, Kathy, it's important that we must never forget that at NASREC, these are the outcomes where members of the African National Congress were not able to say that you will not be part of us because of what you did. And, and when, they, when they allowed him to serve in that structure, they were in fact spitting at the graves of some of the women who died in this country. 
but but how do they need to change that now because if um, what what he has explained the situation to be is to be to be believed he's saying it's part of a smear campaign to brand him as an abuser for life as it were and if that's the reasoning he's giving to his comrades why should they not believe him why should they fire him in spite of the fact that this matter is still ongoing well, you know, Katie, I don't think that it would be fair for due process to ask them that they must fire him. But you say that we will suspend you. You are sending a particular message. Katie, you are saying to South Africans, we regard this matter very seriously. But you are not being, you are not actually judging. You're saying, let us allow due process to take course. But we know that he's got this history. But you are saying that in fairness, Katie, you are saying, will you, in the name of justice, uh, uh, stand aside until we, all processes are taken care of? And that, Kathy, you don't know what it will do. It is symbolic, but it sends a strong message. And I, 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 uh, look, I, I hope that the ANC Youth League and the Women's League will in fact join all of us as South Africans. because. We must not forget that this is not about him as a person. It, it has nothing to do, it's about a principle. It's about how women every day get raped. How every day women get battered and die, Kathy, with protection orders in their bags, in their hands. And of course, um, as the Youth League, you've gone further than to just say that he must be suspended. You've said that he must be fired um, from Parliament and even that um, he must resign rather from his positions in Parliament and in the ANC. Well, we, we feel that uh, it, would make, it would make sense. Uh, you see, the, 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 the normal understanding, particularly in the ANC, is that uh, if you happened to be Mlondi Mkize, and you join the ANC, the ANC must get helped by you. Not that the ANC must help you. What do we mean in essence? Your presence must lift the African National Congress, not that the African National Congress must lift you. And we feel that at this point, it's the other way around. Actually, it is the African National Congress that is lifting him. And as it does that, that which is lifting is leaving the debt in the hands of the African National Congress. And that's why we're saying that uh, he must leave the African National Congress leadership, even if it means that he says to the leadership, can I take leave up until this matter is resolved? Don't call me to your meetings till this matter is concluded. Because what we need to be very vigilant and guard against is to do exactly what uh, Mama was saying, that uh, it just looks like that the ANC leadership and the ANC it's just absent in the But, but how does it violence. feel, the, the fact that you're almost a lone voice in terms of how strongly um, you're, you're, you're putting your comments over what should happen to Mduduzi Manana? Your elders in the ANC and the other um, um, bodies, organizations of the ANC, don't, they, they, they're not talking as strongly as you are. Are, but, are you disappointed by that? Well, I'm not disappointed, and the Italy shouldn't be. So, so that we understand uh, in context, unless there's some event that would have missed me. You'll remember that the ANC, the ANC Women's League would have been the first one to issue a statement. And that statement was issued before the clip that we all of, now, all of us know went viral. The ANC Youth League issued a statement just before the clip. So it means that the ANC Youth League would have been fortunate to get some of the things that are said in the clip. Let me make an example. In the clip, he says, uh, I can offer you anything, 100. He doesn't say 100,000, he says 100, just for your humiliation. Ma. Eh? Uh, so if you want to offer someone 100, it means you, you are agreeing that you did something wrong, otherwise you'd not be offering the 100. Then the Women's League would have been unfortunate to have been issued a statement before they had that clip. I'm not defending the Women's League. I'm just saying, in terms of the timelines, those are things that we need to consider. Even if you go look, I'm sure you receive media statements here every day, you would know and notice that there is a gap of a day in between us and the Women's League statement. Asla, well, perhaps let me get um, final thoughts from you because we have run out of time. How do we move forward from this conversation? Because as it stands, we seem to be talking ourselves in circles, at least the public opinion on the one hand and the experience of then what happens to powerful men um, who are accused of um, whether it's gender-based violence or even a sexual, a sexual assault matters. I have no hope that the current ruling party 
is going to bring about change where violence against women is concerned. I don't think we've got any political will. And while the ANC Youth League right now is talking very strongly, and we welcome those words, the ANC as an entity has had mixed messages against gender-based violence. And I think beyond saying somebody must resign, the ANC needs to tell us as the ruling party what are they doing for themselves inside the movement to confront what causes violence against women, but also in society. I think it is going to take women to organize themselves. And for me, I take my courage to a whole lot of women out there who we saw, even with the death of Winnie Mandela, who were organizing and were even reshaping the narrative about what she stood for in history, when some of her comrades themselves were the ones that had stifled that history about her. I think civil society and young women in particular in this country such as we was demonstrated by the young folies in this country, uh, what is going to take this country to turn around? I think as women in this country, and there is a lot of evidence, we are on our own when it comes to violence against women and gender-based violence. And therefore, the answer is going to come to us. I hold no breath for the ANC from top to bottom to sideways to us helping us deal with this matter of, of, of gender-based violence because there is no track record that they have ever dealt any decisively. And I'm actually not surprised. And that is why perhaps even the statement that comes from the ANC Youth League, we need to applaud because there has been no guidance and there has been no leadership on the issue of gender-based violence in the ANC, not uh, years ago, not today, not now. All right, that's where we leave it for tonight. Let me thank all my guests uh, for your time uh, tonight, uh, Lebo. Ramafoko from the Soul City Institute, Mlondim Kiza from the ANC Youth League, and Mbuisa Lobota from the Commission for Gender Equality.